Hello there brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the International Ministerial Congress of the Church of God's Seventh Day. We find ourselves, don't we, in really unusual circumstances where our custom of meeting every Sabbath for fellowship, for worship, for praise, for adoration and touching base on the Word of God doesn't exist as it did a few weeks ago because of the coronavirus outbreak, the pandemic that exists, the regulations and the restrictions on travel and on churches gathering together. And this brings us now within a few days time to the Lord's Supper. Many people have asked the question, how do we facilitate the Lord's Supper? Should we postpone it? Should we do it within small family groups in my own home? Or should we perhaps participate in a larger live streaming? And what about for those of us who've been asked to facilitate it, the bread, the wine, the following by the foot washing within our own homes? How do we go about it? Because we've always had a senior pastors or elders who are able to facilitate that for us every year as we celebrate, as we proclaim, as we commemorate the Lord's death until he comes. And I want to share just a few minutes because of those particular questions, how to proceed. And I want to, 2,000 years ago, Jesus said to his disciples, I've eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And two words really strike me here, where Jesus was eager for this just as we are eager to be in our Lord's presence, where two or three are gathered in my name, said Jesus, there I am among them. And this sense of eagerness, this year especially, to gather together, to commemorate, to celebrate, to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, under changed circumstances. And then Jesus said, with you. And Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So despite finding ourselves in strange circumstances on this earth, in the kingdom eternal heavenly equation, the Lord Jesus is always with us. So as we gather on Tuesday night just after sunset, we can begin to embrace with confidence and humility the great redemptive price in the blood of Jesus that was shed on our behalf. And now I want to just share a few moments of what this might look like. We will have the bread symbolizing the broken body of Jesus Christ. We'll have the fruit of the vine symbolizing he shed blood for the remission of sins. And we'll also conclude with foot washing, the first act after covenant renewal of humility, that of a servant, in the steps of Jesus Christ. The most important thing of a reason like this is I encourage you to step out in faith and recognize the great price in humility that the Heavenly Father sacrificed His Son. And you may want to begin reading from John 3.16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And there are a variety of other scriptures that you might want to read, taking verses from John chapter 13 and John chapter 14, to help set the scene of the words that Jesus might say to, said to his disciples in preparing them for his departure from this world. One of the scriptures that you may want to read from is John chapter 13 verse 1 where Jesus, John records that he loved his disciples to, his, to the end. And he says, no greater love has a man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And so in commemorating the highest price possible that's been paid for us, we, we recognize that apart from Jesus, we can do nothing, that we must totally surrender and celebrating on the Lord's Supper reminds us of that. For God did not send His Son in to condemn the world, but to save it. And that's a beautiful thing to remember. I would also encourage you to take note that there are two ordinances that Jesus commanded. One is baptism, which happens once in your life. But the Lord's Supper is a repeated proclamation of Jesus' death and resurrection and he's coming again for the marriage supper of the Lamb. So we commemorate covenant, we celebrate victory, and we remember the extraordinary big price that was paid on our behalf. So I'd encourage you to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, where Paul is instructing a Gentile church, a church of Gentile converts, on what Jesus did on that particular night 2,000 years ago. 
we come to the particular point of the service where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And against this framework, you may want to read Matthew's testimony from Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. You may want to read John chapter 6 where Jesus says, I am the bread of life who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Other verses, Matthew 6, John chapter 6 verse 35, continuing on to verse 51. Matthew 5, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Scriptures where Jesus says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And in 1 Corinthians, this is my body, which is for you. And then you may want to be able to, before you break the bread, is with clean hands and hygiene, a pair of gloves, and then lead in prayer. Thank God for the broken body of Jesus Christ. In your own words, pray that we may discern the body of Christ, recognize the price that was paid for us, and on completion of the prayer, with, with gloved hands, break the bread and pass it around. Give the members of your household just a few minutes to contemplate the broken body of Jesus Christ. And after that, cover up the bread and join together once again. The next part of the Lord's Supper is a moment of absolute covenant renewal proclamation, the moment of the new covenant symbolized in the fruit of the vine. 1 Peter 1 verse 18 tells us to 19, knowing that you were ransomed with the precious blood of Christ. You may like to read from Luke chapter 22 verse 20, read from Matthew 26, 26 to verse 29, where Jesus talks, this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches, and we are reminded that apart from Christ, we can do nothing and we are nothing. And Jesus reminds us that. Then you may want to ask someone in the house fellowship or yourself to lead in prayer, to ask God to bless the fruit of vine, to help us discern the great price of Jesus' shed blood, sacrifice for the sins of the world, and then distribute the wine, the grape juice, the fruit of the vine, and allow again everyone a few moments to contemplate that moment of covenant in the shed blood of Jesus. At the conclusion of this particular part of the evening, you may want to then participate where scripture says after eating or while eating Jesus did something very significant and you may r recognize it's it's the job of a servant it's Jesus initiated it's extremely humbling and that in our tradition is washing one another's feet in the example that Jesus Christ did you may want to read from John 13 beginning in verse 12 Peter's conversation with Jesus um, and Peter's resistance to the whole idea of foot washing and then Jesus' insistence that if he didn't do that, Peter would have no part with him. Remember David in the psalm says, Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. There are a variety of scriptures, including much of John chapter 13, that helps us to understand the spirit of this aspect of our celebration, of our proclamation, of the humility embodied in, in Christ and therefore in us and the proclamation of Jesus' death. And so you may wash one another's feet. Christ in you washes the feet of your friend. And Christ in your friend washes your feet. So it's as if Christ washes your feet and you wash Jesus' feet. Jesus said, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And so it's a privilege and an honour to share on this moment of intimacy, of fellowship, of communion and of proclamation. If you like, you may read then at the end of the service passages from John chapter 15 and passages from John chapter 17 where Jesus does three things in John chapter 17. He prays for himself, he prays for his immediate disciples and then he prays for all who would believe on account of their testimony.
at the end of the evening, you may close in prayer, perhaps sing a song together, and know that your ransom was paid, redemption was given, and glory awaits. I'm your brother, in the name of Jesus Christ, on behalf of the International Ministerial Congress, we wish you an inspiring and meaningful Lord's Supper season this year.